Welcome back, everyone. We're here for another uh, Q&A. Anything that I say is definitely not meant to diagnose or replace your medical care. Check with your doctor before implementing any of this information. Uh, so let's go right, jump right into social media. Uh, Steve, you're standing by with some great questions. We sure are. And we got a full lineup in what we call our green room. So we're going to have a lot of fun today in the usual quiz questions. Uh, true false questions so uh, we're going to entertain everyone let's kick it off uh, with social media we want to show equal love to them and we're going to give them top billing starting off with this show andrew from youtube is it possible to do healthy raw vegan keto it's possible um it's more difficult because when you do vegan you have um a lot of carbs and it's hard to get enough fat um, and the type of complete protein that you need, but it's possible. It just takes a little bit more work and you got to make sure that you, um, get enough zinc because normally zinc comes from like animal products. Um, but you can still get it from, um, other sources as well. And then you have the active form of vitamin A, which is difficult, like retinol. That's hard to get. DHA is hard to get. So you can do it, but it takes a little bit more work. All right. Well, good luck on that one. Jeanette, also from YouTube. I'm allergic to lemons. <clears throat> no lemonade for her. What can I drink as an alternative to lemon water? Well, you can do, uh, do the apple cider vinegar water. That would give you a different um, angle, and that really helps your blood sugars. And it's good for um, insulin resistance. It's good for your liver. Uh, so I would do the apple cider vinegar. Do like a tablespoon in a glass of water drink that thing down and uh you're good to go okay one more from uh from uh, social media southern bella as she calls herself i've had acne the past three years after taking an antibiotic that's interesting what are your five biggest <laughs> she wants five biggest tips to get rid of it all right number one you need a probiotic number two you need a prebiotic so just combine those in sauerkraut. Just start consuming sauerkraut on a regular basis because if you, you know, there's, when you start uh, destroying your microbiome in your gut, oh my gosh, not only can it mess up your skin because there's microbes on your skin as well that get uh, altered, but also um, it affects people's mood. I mean, they can actually get depressed from doing that. Uh, antibiotics also um, have a side effect of increasing um um, like blood sugars and uh, um, also throw off your mineral balance because you're now you're not making enough lactic acid from the lactobacillus. So it just, it just creates a huge, huge problem. So we got prebiotic. We have a probiotic and the prebiotic, okay? And then um, as far as acne goes, that's an androgen problem. So you wouldn't want to, um, if you're female, you want to make sure you don't have PCOS. And the way to do that is just to start avoiding these things called carbohydrates. So number three, reduce carbs. Number four, start doing fasting. There's nothing better for your skin than a nice glowing skin than doing regular fasting. I mean, take a look at Steve. I mean, it's amazing, his skin. And the last thing um, for acne is to take enough vitamin D, whether it's the sun, that would be the ideal situation, or just take it as a supplement. So there we have our five. My goodness. We could also go to six. Zinc is also really important too. Wow, bonus. Uh, bonus advice. Well, that's terrific. Well, good luck to you. That's uh, an agonizing problem to have that most of us suffer with from sometimes. So I can't wait for you to report back in with a nice, clear face. And uh, why don't we kick off with one of our highly popular quiz questions, Doc. There it is. All right. What do Americas eat more of, hamburgers or hot dogs? I have an opinion, but we'll leave that to the audience. And then why don't we uh, now go uh, to our, our guests. And we just got Greg Horseman back. He had sort of disappeared for a while. And Greg, we're going to put you on uh, with Dr. Berg. Please unmute yourself. And you're on with Dr. Berg. Okay, uh, I think I'm unmuted. Is is that good? You sound terrific. That's great. Okay, great. Well, I appreciate the uh, the opportunity, Dr. Berg. Uh, I've been actually uh, onto your program really since Christmas Day uh, last year, 
and uh, I've lost a considerable amount of body fat and weight, uh, and I'm really pleased with the results. I'm actually feeling really good these days. And, uh, but I've got a few issues that I'd like to share with you, and I'd like to get your thoughts on them to, to tell me where I'm missing the boat. First off, I, I want to mention that instead of doing uh, OMAD, I do O-M-E-O-D most of the time, which is uh, one meal every other day. And so that's been a pretty consistent trend that I've been on really since December. Uh, but I've also experimented with uh, longer fasting because you've said in some of your videos that, hey, if you're not hungry and you can push this out, go ahead and push it out. So I've, I've really tried to push the limit. I've gone as, as many as four days in a row without eating anything. And no issue, but then I think maybe I should eat something just to be safe. So anyway, the, the symptoms that I've experienced since I've started this path that are not real favorable is I have experienced extreme leg cramps from really the knee down, and it wakes me up from a dead sleep, and I have to stand up to get it to ease up, and then once it eases up, I can lay back down, and, and it follows a cycle. It's about every two hours, and usually when I wake up, I end up going and urinating uh, too, uh, but I was sleeping through the night before when I was heavier, which don't get me wrong, I, I, I'll trade off the heavy for uh, not sleeping well. But uh, I, I've, I've gotten so much energy that I don't want to stop and sometimes even lay down and sleep. And I know you say seven or eight hours is good, but I find I don't really need that. So what part of that process might be contributing? I, I'm eating potassium. I'm eating, I got, took, I got the magnesium uh, things that you offer on your website. So anyway. Okay. So I think, I think if you're already taking, you're probably taking my electrolytes, I'm guessing. So you're getting a lot of potassium. So you're yes. getting also magnesium, which is important, but there's one more mineral that you probably going to take in addition, which is calcium. Um, I would probably find a good, uh, maybe a calcium lactate and take that before bed because um, if you're lacking calcium, and I haven't really talked a lot about this, um, that specifically can, create some tetany and tightness in the lower part of your legs, especially when you're sleeping, nocturnal and um, uh, cramping. Um, so I think that is what's missing with you. Um, I don't think, um, I don't think it's potassium. I don't think it's magnesium, which could be a cause. Uh, but especially when you're doing this fasting, um, you're only eating once every other day. You, it's just going to be a balance of trying to figure out what mineral vitamin. And so, you know, calcium is not something that is uh, easy to get from, unless you're doing some dairy and a lot of vegetables, but you're eating once every other day. So I think what will happen if you, right before bed, if you took like a good calcium lactate, that cramping would go away. Um, so, and the other thing too would be vitamin D to increase the absorption of calcium. So the combination of both of those, I think you might already be taking vitamin D, but Calcium is probably the Thank missing. Your I will say, before I started, I was drinking generally three to four glasses of milk. And when I read the milk carton that said sugar, I said, well, that's, I'm done with that. So I did stop drinking the milk, uh, you know, when I started the program. So calcium might be, might be right up my alley. I think that, I think that's what you're missing. You know, even from a cardiovascular standpoint, you have the heart muscle itself. If you don't have enough calcium, um, boy, do you have a problem with the heart? I mean, and if you have too much, that's the problem too. That's why you have calcium channel blockers. But um, I think uh, even one of the side effects from a calcium channel blocker, which actually creates a deficiency, would be leg cramps. So um, I think it's a real simple answer for you. So go ahead and try that. Take some calcium before bed and um, let us know if that helped. I, I think that's really what you need to do. Okay. And then maybe Great. on the days that you eat, have some, uh, consume some cheese, some high quality cheese and see if that doesn't help you. But I think any symptoms that occur with um, more of a prolonged fast gives us a clue on what your body might be a, have a, having a subclinical deficiency because you're putting the body into a state where all these little things show up now that might maybe didn't show up before. Well, I got to tell you, in terms of the way I feel, I'm energetic. I don't have nearly the brain fog that I felt was beginning to grow uh, for me. And I got to tell you, I, I mean, like I said, I wouldn't trade any of these little symptoms for what I had before, but I thought maybe you could That's help great. me uh, out. So That's I appreciate so great, it. Greg. Give it a try. This is awesome. Right. Great. You. Appreciate your success. Awesome.
That's great. Thanks so much, Greg. And uh, what a wonderful success story. Uh, tr pruned off all that weight. Uh, why don't we discuss who's watching us around the world? So a good morning to all our viewers joining us from the UK, Canada, Jordan, Yugoslavia. Hang on, that just jumped up for me. Uh, Iran, Kuwait, Algeria, France, Greece, Italy, India, Japan, Pakistan, Germany, Cameroon, Chile, Trinidad, Tobago, the Netherlands, Scotland, Taiwan, Iraq, Lebanon, Uzbekistan, uh, Istanbul, Egypt, Kurdistan, Mex Mexico, and by the way, we've got a guest coming up later in the show, Daniel, representing Mexico City, so we're excited about that. Uh, Suriname, haven't heard of them before, but I'm sure it's a great place. Israel, Sweden, Zambia, Norway, the Philippines, Brazil, Peru, Switzerland, Thailand, and all across, of course, these United States, and uh, did he say Canada? If he didn't, let's throw that in. Uh, so that is fantastic, yeah. and all of these people have cumulatively uh, worked on the quiz question. And the quiz question asks, what do Americans eat more of, uh, hamburgers and hot dogs? I'm guessing hamburgers, maybe because I slam a lot of them down. And let's see. Um, so 65% say the boiger. 35% say hot dogs. Are they onto something, Doc? Well, they are onto something. It's, a, it's about $14 billion. Now, honestly, I, I, uh, there's conflicting data on that. But I will say that there's like a 14 billion to a 9 billion. But again, there's conflicting data on there. But we do know, Steve, and this is such an important question, that people in the U.S. eat more hamburgers. And the, this relates to the video that I did, I released yesterday on um, <laughs> incredible. If you're, if you're consuming burger, burgers at a fast food uh, restaurant like I did growing up until I was like 28 years old, which was about five years ago, um, I basically accumulated so much corn in my DNA. I mean, even the burger itself is like 93% corn derived because of the, the corn fed um, cows. So, um, and then of course it's GMO. So we're putting all this stuff into our bodies um, at a foundational DNA level, which um, I don't know. I, I don't think it's the best thing to, uh, to build our bodies out of corn, uh, Steve. I don't think it's the best foundation. But um, the point is that uh, if, you, if you can do it, make your burgers grass-fed at home without the bun because there's a lot of additional things in there that come from corn too, like the high fructose corn syrup, so-called ketchup, and then, of course, the soda and the corn oil that they fry the fries in. <laughs> It's incredible. There's a great um, documentary. I think it's called King Corn. Fascinating. You got to check that out. Very interesting. Let's go to Facebook. Iona uh, says, please share. She's getting personal here. Please share what supplements you take every day, Dr. Berg. Um, you know, I, I rotate and uh, depending on what I need, but I, 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 right now the sun's coming out, so I don't take my D3 anymore because I'm getting enough sun. Um, but I usually take the, the D3 and K2. Um, I also, in the morning, I take a whole lemon and stick it in the blender with a glass of water, a big glass of water, and I'll put a scoop of my um, electrolyte powder in there uh, with another scoop of wheatgrass juice powder. So now I have the chlorophyll, phytonutrients, and, um, and then I take my trace minerals um, because I actually spiked it recently with a little bit more zinc, copper, molybdenum, mang manganese, things like that. And so that's pretty much what I'm doing lately. And it seems to work out real good. But then, you know, other times I'll, I'll go to my probiotic. I'll start taking a probiotic, um, a little bit of that. And uh, I might rotate sometimes to a sleep aid before bed, but I don't really need that anymore. I'm like, just go right out. And, and sometimes I'll take my nutritional yeast before bed as well. So... Um, and then when I'm exercising, not lately, but I used to take the uh, the uh, keto energy, which used to be called the mitochondrial support, just because it's a real high quality B1 product within a blend of all the nutrients, that definitely increases your energy if you need more energy when you're working out. Um, the latest workout that I'm going to be recommending, I'll be doing videos on it, yeah, I kind of rotate, I find some new workout and I'm like, wow, this is awesome. The sled, the sled. 
Um, there's a really great uh, guy out there that I, I'm going to interview at the end of this month. It's called the Toes Over Knee Guy, and he recommends a sled. I, I got a little sled. They're not that expensive. And, boy, you want to work out? The sled for your knees, you go backwards. Incredible cardiovascular and leg workout. And um, that's the one that I'll be doing a video on very soon. But uh, um, definitely want to check that out. It's pretty pretty cool stuff. Very interesting. I can see Karen on there with a whistle yelling at you as you shove her across the field. Hey, I got her to do it too because um, it's especially good for people that have knee problems. But I'm telling you, for your back, because it kind of reverses the whole flow. Like instead of doing like this squats um, that blows out your discs, um, it, this this works on your the different different muscles that strengthen your back. And so if you do a, like, if you have back pain and you have a lumbar support, maybe even a rolled towel or something like this, if you do a lot of sitting, a little thing you can get from Kmart or Walmart, whatever, you keep that in your lower back, keep the curve in the lower back, and then you do the backward pull with that sled, you will not have back pain because the foundation of your feet, your knees, your quads, your hip, um, all will support that uh, nice curve in your lower back versus sitting all day, which just loses the curve, and then you get back pain. Wow. I can't wait to see that video. Ambreen from Facebook. My mom is a diabetic, and her feet get painful, especially at nighttime. Can you explain what I can do to make her feel better? You can immediately, you know, for immediate relief, you can get something called benfotamine. It's a fat-soluble B vitamin. Take just four of those a day, spread them out, and... Within probably a few days, you'll start feeling relief. But what's happening is she needs to reduce her blood sugars. Uh, she needs to get off these things called, um, what are they called? Um, carbohydrates. And then um, go on keto, intermittent fasting, uh, because it's that high sugar that's creating damage to her vascular system that then feed the nerves to the lower part of the feet. So her nerves are basically dying because they don't have enough blood flow because what sugar does to the vascular system is nasty. It, it destroys your eyes, your heart, your kidneys, and your nerves. Well, that's a bummer. Todd from YouTube, this is a good question. Would any of your products break a fast? My friend is in menopause, asking for a friend, and is struggling to lose weight, uh, and she takes a lot of your products. Uh, the only product that would break a fast is the meal replacement or the keto shake because it has protein. All the other ones won't break the fast at all because it's, they're very, very, very low calories and uh, they don't have carbs. And um, I, I'm not, I do have an amino acid product, but it's different than the branch amino acids that you would get that turn into sugar. Uh, this blend of amino acids is a um, very unique blend that replaces your protein. It doesn't turn into sugar. Uh, maybe 1% of it does, but it's so insignificant compared to all other proteins out there. Okay. How about another question? All right, good. What's the primary side effect of electrolytes on the heart? So what's the number one symptom you're going to get within your cardiovascular system if you're deficient in electrolytes? All right, terrific. Well, we spoke of Mexico before, and we have Daniel Dominguez standing by to represent the city and ask a question of Dr. Berg. Uh, Daniel, you're on with Dr. Berg. Go ahead, sir. Hey, Dr. Berg, a pleasure following, following work from Mexico City. And well, my question is this, uh, three months ago, I started keto and uh, fasting because I developed this thing called leaky gut. And back in December, the neuroinflammation and the brain fog was 10 out of 10. I was feeling drugged and high all the time. My wife and I got really scared. I couldn't drive, couldn't go to the mall by myself because I was all foggy all the time and well after a doctor told me keto uh, fasting and natural supplements three months later so far so good i'm coming back being myself but every now and then um i get after a meal 
or after working out, I get the brain fog back and migraines on the right side of my head. So my wife and I are, are wondering, like, which is that last step I'm missing for my mm -hmm. total healing? Uh, should I target, you know, the digestive system? Should I target the brain? Um, basically, that's my question because so far, you know, thyroid test, uh, blood test, hormone test, everything looks fine. And the doctors are like, okay, we have no idea what else to do with you, right? And this relates to exercise, right? Yeah, every time I exercise or, or every time I finish a meal, let's say the breakfast, the brain fog tries to come back and the migraines just show up. Yeah, I think here's the thing that you're running up against. You, you're you not fully adapted to fat like you should yet. And that does take... It takes time. It takes uh, between one and three months, especially if you're work, if you're an athlete. Um, sometimes mm -hmm. it could take up to eight months because these athletes um, that are relying on so much sugar over a period of time, and all of a sudden you switch to a keto, it's like, what? Your body's like, wait a second. Those enzymes that have to develop within the muscles and the tissues um, have to adapt, and it takes a good amount of time. So without that... Uh, instant sugar that your body is supposed to be making you and you stress the body by exercising and it can show up as um, a, a blood sugar issue um, just because you haven't adapted so how do we fix that well number one we have patience we wait but we also do longer fast so you want to not have a breakfast so you want to just do two meals and try to squish them so if you could work up to 18 hour fast or even 20 hour fasting you're going to get there a lot faster. Now, in the meantime, what you should do is you should, um, when you work out, just take a little bit of a, maybe a teaspoon of MCT oil before the workout. That will give your brain ketones and probably minimize the side effect. So that's all you have to do is just kind of keep working on lowering your carbs, fast longer, give it more time, and then make sure you're doing some sea salt too because the sea salt's, um, if they're deficient, can cause a bit of a headache. Um, but I think it's really just you haven't adapted to 100% fat burning yet. Perfect. So basically, uh, patience, I'm not worrying about my brain just blowing up. Correct. And then just fast longer too. And definitely okay. skip your breakfast because um, the way you know you're fat adapted is like, wow, I don't really even need to eat. I can keep going for long periods of time without any hunger. Then, then you know your body's working. Sounds great. Thank you so much. I appreciate your work and thank you for the help and thank you for making me uh, appear today here. Thank you so much. Hey, you're welcome. And I do know that um, I think that you can get higher quality avocados in Mexico as compared to here and I, I think uh, even some, some of your food is higher quality so I think you have a unfair advantage those people in the US and so that's good I would ride the wave and uh, after your meals just stick another avocado in there and you're good to go perfect sounds great thank you so much okay well they might have good avocados but apparently they don't have as good weather today it's actually warmer in Wilmington North Carolina than in it is Mexico City they got some little cold front so I'm, I'm feeling sort of um, uh, proud of that effect usually it's so gorgeous down there and uh, I tell you what we have the answer to the second quiz question which asks what is the primary effect of electrolytes on the heart and 80% said heart palpitations 20% say lower blood pressure okay so 80% palpitations that would be a heart arrhythmia symptom and yes heart arrhythmias is the is the first thing to show up with a lack of electrolytes, but you can also have blood pressure as well. But um, the big one is the um, electro um, arrhythmias. Um, so the heart goes out of balance when you're lacking electrolytes, which, you know, it's really bizarre to me is that if you go to the doctor, um, do they ever recommend electrolytes? No, they recommend medication for the arrhythmia 
And what would that be? That Well, first of all, it might be a diuretic, possibly. And what is the side effect of diuretics? Deficiency of potassium, magnesium, and the retention of calcium, which then causes arrhythmias. And then they, they might also put you on um, um, a calcium channel blocker, which has a, a similar effect. So it's, it's fascinating that the solution ends up creating the problem you're trying to solve. I mean, it just doesn't make sense to me. So I will be releasing the video maybe in two days on that topic, maybe tomorrow. Um, but uh, this fascinating um, cardiovascular electrolyte connection, and when you really understand it, it really becomes simple. It's like, wow, no wonder I have arrhythmias. I need more of this food, whatever. So um, unfortunately... Everything is designed not to correct the root issue. That's unfortunate. Now, this one's a little earthy. Walking mole, uh, as they call themselves from Facebook, I have PCOS and have been having recurring boils in my armpits and groin area. What could be the cause? Help! Polycystic ovarian syndrome in females, um, it's, it's an androgen problem. It's excess androgens, which is a testosterone um, one of them is testosterone, and the, and the solution is to lower the, the key hormone that raises androgens, and that would be insulin. So you want to reduce insulin. If you have too much insulin, guess what else you get? Boils. So um, if you get on healthy keto and do the fasting, um, you can kill two birds with one stone, both of these conditions. So that's the solution. I have a lot of videos on PCOS, but um, that's how you do it. Terrific. I think this is an oft asked question. Aries from Facebook. What are your thoughts on the carnivore, carnivore, excuse me, diet? Well, I, I, honestly, I, I think it's it's good for especially those uh, digestive problems that people have that have gut inflammation. Um, personally, I'm not changing my program to a carnivore because there's a lot of benefits to vegetables that I, I that I've found to be helpful for people, and so um, to cut out all vegetables. You have the fiber to feed the microbes. You have the vitamin C, the potassium, and not only that, but all the phytonutrients, the carotenoids, the phenols, polyphenols, indol-3 for anti-cancer. There's a lot of benefits. Uh, I feel better when I consume vegetables, but also I need my protein. Um, so I, I'm not in any shape, way, or form a vegan or even a vegetarian. I have a lot of protein, enough, not excessive. But I also have uh, a lot of vegetables, so I have the best of both worlds. But if you feel worse from vegetables, then try the carnivore and see if that doesn't help you. Now, that's great. I hope we can help Victoria because she's had diarrhea for three years and has, or had diarrhea and has been on keto for three years. What's she doing wrong? Well, I don't know, but it's dangerous to have diarrhea um, that long, um, especially with a deficiency of uh, zinc and electrolytes. Um, so obviously I, she needs to get a stool sample. She needs to take the right probiotic and evaluate what's going on. And you might want to quickly radically change different things in your diet. Sometimes even vegetables can create diarrhea or sometimes um, other foods can create diarrhea, but there's definitely something odd going on. A good simple remedy that I use for diarrhea or I recommend would be non-sweetened um, kefir with some blackberries you blend it up slug it down and uh, that usually helps to reduce um, diarrhea well we wish you all the best victoria and that does sound serious so let's see uh catalina from facebook what is the what is good to treat restless leg syndrome that is usually a buildup of something called lactic acid or you might have a version of what's called lactic acidosis so the the remedy is to take more B1, thymine. So you would get it in a nutritional yeast. I used to have that problem too. And it usually comes from consuming too many carbs, like I did. So I would have to get up in the middle of the night and literally pound my legs. They had so much energy. I couldn't sleep. They were restless. I would literally go running at five o'clock in the morning um, when I was I should have been sleeping. Of course, now I wake up a lot earlier because I don't need as much sleep. But yeah, that restless leg is a is a B1 deficiency, and um, you have too much lactic acid generation. And um, 
A simple remedy is just take some B1 through nutritional yeast. Wonderful. Well, all us folks in the United States enjoy getting your products with ease and affordably. And I understand, Doc, uh, that you have uh, available all around the world. Do you want to talk about your new sort of product availability? Yeah, if you're, if you're from, from uh, other parts of the country other than other parts of the world, excluding U.S., uh, we now ha- we're in different places. So we'll put those links down below so you can definitely save on shipping costs. So, And we're working on that more and more. So um, the costs will be coming down as time goes on. All right. Well, James from YouTube, back to YouTube. Uh, do you believe ionizers are good? What are the benefits of using one? The ionizers are really good because they um, they can really help certain uh, particles pollution in the air, um, especially if, like, let's say you work at a nail salon and you have all these chemicals. A good ionizer will just kind of purify the air. It purifies uh, things in the air and also, um, you know, in certain concentrations, I, I think it can help you. But if it's too concentrated, it d- definitely can irritate your throat and things like that. So the right concentration, I think, is a good way to uh, kill off things in the air. If there's a mold growing in the air, you know, or what are chemicals, or you live in a polluted area, pollution is one one trigger for blood sugar issues too, which is wild. So depending on your air quality you may want to get an air uh, ionizer. Well, I love all these names people come up with for social media. Next up, Destined to Play from YouTube. I have Cushing syndrome and I need to lose belly fat and build muscle. I also have a moon face. Not sure what that is. What should I do now? Well, I just happened to um, have this book right here, Steve. Frank Netter, Encyclopedia on Endocrinology. Here's Cushing syndrome right here. Wow. Okay, that's a high le- that's high level of cortisol, <clears throat> and um, I have a whole recommendation on that. If you look, don't don't try to search for um, Cushing. Search for adrenal body type. Um, we need to help you reduce stress, and a couple things right off the bat would be for you know even better than exercise is physical work around the house outside, not in the in the house but outside. Being in nature, going for long walks, gets your mind off the problems of the of in your life, and then also the nutritional yeast is essential. Potassium foods are essential, um, and vitamin D is really important because uh, that can act to help uh, reduce uh, stress and bring your mood up. So that's that's what I would do. There's a lot more to that. So watch my videos on the adrenal body type. Wow, that's unbelievable, Doc. I can't believe you had that at your fingertips. Uh, audience, I promise we did not preemptively tell him what this question was. It just popped up. And uh, by the way, this is interesting. I don't know what I can show here. But uh, there's a whole cadre of people that feel that our show is not live. And they talked about that last week, and they think we're pre-recorded. And let me see if I can show them today's questions. I want them to know that, I mean, we wouldn't mind producing it non-live or live to tape, as they call it. But we really are coming to you live and we really are watching your questions live and asking them. So for those of you who have date, here's hard proof of uh, the fact that the show is live. I don't have a newspaper to hold up, but this is the second best thing. Steve, why don't you just tell them these are paid actors that we have coming on asking questions in the in the green room. And this is all pre-recorded and rehearsed. Um, you can tell by, you know, <laughs> the polished answers, right? That's right. I'm a, a, a Japanese robot that has been imported uh, to mimic Steve. And uh, anyway, so that's how we fool all you folks. But no, the Dr. Berg show is indeed live. And sometimes I hate to tell you, you can tell because all of a sudden something will happen. Boing, 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 we go off the air for a second and that would never happen with a pre-recorded show. So that's further proof. All right, let's get back to business here with the next uh, question. This is a true falser. Okay. Whole grains are high in fiber. Is that true or false? All right, audience, dig in. I tell you, they're lightning fast. They come back with the answer uh, just immediately. All right, why don't we go back to um, our green room, and Eric is coming to us from Fort Myer, Florida, also a place with terrific uh, weather. And Eric, you are on with Dr. Berg. Dr. Berg, uh, thanks for having me on your show. 
Uh, first off, um, longtime listener, uh, was introduced to this over two years ago. I've lost over 40 pounds on, uh, you know, one meal a day and keto and following a lot of your recommendations and all the supplements and everything that you're talking about, I use on a regular basis. So big fan. And so thank you. Uh, it's changed my life dramatically. Great. Uh, and Great. in that process, there's two things that, um, are persisting with me that are unusual. Uh, and I wanted to get your opinion on this. Number one is, uh, genetically I'm predisposed to gout, uh, as part of my DNA. And it's been re recurring more as a part of the program that I'm on than I have ever had before in my life. And besides abstinence of all the key things that cause, you know, uh, gout, you know, and I'm, I like alcohol. I, you know, I still partake in those types of things. I'm curious of your point of view on that. So I'd like to get that. The second part of my question is on another piece too, is like, uh, I've also had intermittent um, constipation uh, as a part of this program as well. And, you know, I, I do a lot of the, you know, vegetables combined with uh, proteins and pretty consistent, very uh, drink a lot of water every day as well. So, you know, something's causing that. I'm not quite sure what might be the root of that. So there's my two questions and I'd love to hear your point of view. Okay. Do you, with the constipation, do you, um, are you consuming enough vegetables? You feel mostly? Yes. I mean, I'll eat a, a huge salad and I've had people look at me when they see the salad that I eat and go, go, I can't believe you're eating a whole salad. Right. So right. It, I do a lot and perhaps, you know, uh, at some point when I don't, or when I do have the constipation, there might, you know, be lulls in the, uh, you know, what I'm actually eating. So I can't quite pinpoint it. Okay. So a couple things um, that help constipation. Um, one is uh, maybe a, a try a different probiotic. Um, that would be one thing. Um, maybe have uh, more fermented vegetables as part of your salad. Um, the other thing is uh, the purified bile salts. Um, that, that tends to um, a lot of times replace the bile that you might not, you might be missing in the liver, and that helps lubricate the colon. So these are just things I would look at. Now, shifting gears to gout, um, yeah, you're right. Alcohol is a trigger. Um, I don't know if you consume chocolate, whether it's keto-friendly or not. Okay, good. Um, purines are a problem, but when you do fasting, you know, your, your uric acid does go up. One thing two things you can do. If you could get your pH, maybe get a, uh, a pH tester. You can probably buy them on Amazon. They're little, actually just get a, it's like they're little urine sticks and they tell you various things about your urine. And one of those things would be pH and see what your pH is. If your pH is um, like five, which it probably is, then that's probably why you're getting gout. We want to bring up to a six, maybe a 6.5. Okay. Um, and so how do we do that? Um, you might need to alkalize, uh, with potassium citrate, like through the day, have a little bit more potassium citrate. That's an alkalizer. And that's why the vegetables will help as well. Mm. Um, the other th remedy that's good for gout is, uh, tart cherries. I uh, take that as a supplement. Get... Okay, good. You might want to find, try to find, um, and not go crazy with them, but to find freeze dried tart cherries and have those after your dinner, especially if you get gout late at night or just during the day, or does it come and go or it comes and goes. And when it hits, you know, it persists and all the, you know, symptoms that come with it and then it fades over time. Um, but you know, I'd like to figure out what I'm actually doing that causes it and then stop doing that. <clears throat> there's definitely, I will say there's a genetic, uh, part of this and it's unfortunate like you might if you're predisposed it can kind of just turn on it's really it's not even honestly the uric acid crystals that are causing the pain it's the uric acid crystals that are stirring up your immune system that's causing the problem so it's an immune issue um you know people have tried the uh, celery seed and the um the different remedies and some of those work right and some of them don't I think the, the best thing that I recommend uh, that seems to work the best is just to alter the pH of your urine to keep it from getting too acid. And it not you don't want to alkalize it too much, but 
you may need to just bring up the pH. And, and sometimes even when you're fasting, to take some uh, baking soda, a little bit like an eighth of a teaspoon in water, drink that down in the middle of your fast, alkalize it so it reduces some of that acidity that, that might help um, reduce the pain. But I think it's time for me to do like more of an in-depth video on gout because it is definitely a popular problem with a lot of people. So um, I'll, I'll do more of a complete video on that soon. All right. Appreciate the input. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Eric. Well, best of luck, Eric. That is a very painful and gruesome problem, I understand. I'm yeah, especially especially if you're trying to exercise and uh, you're doing the the sled, if you have a toe pain and you're like, you know, doing anything with exercise, it's like it throws off your gait. So now your pressure is on a certain part of your foot, and then now it messes up your knee and your back. So it can really throw off the whole foundation of your body. Wow, yeah, Eric shaking his head on that one. Okay, so the audience is right on it. And our last uh, question was a true false. Whole grains are high in fiber. And 60% of the audience say that it's false and 40% say it's true. <clears throat> they, I mean, they, whoever they is, promote that it's high in fiber. These healthy whole grains get your fiber. Well, guess what? I mean, it's roughly between four to 10%. It's, it's extremely low. It's extremely low. Even the whole, I mean, the 100% whole grain is very, very low. It's not a high fiber thing. Let's take vegetables, for example. Let's take celery in or spinach. It's a 50% fiber with only like a per cup, it's like a four grams of carbs. Whereas you have with the grain, you got this 4% fiber <clears throat> with 40% carbs. I mean, it's like, it's not a high fiber food. And don't, if you want to get fiber, don't get it from your grains. Um, I'll be releasing a video on grains. Um, but there's, I think, um, yeah, so it, there's just a lot of myths about that. So that would be a big fat false. All right. Well, uh, real quickly, one of our former guests here, Greg Horseman, was on uh, the TV, so to speak. He wants to know if there's an amount of calcium lactate to take each day to help his issues. You know, I, I don't have an exact amount. Um, if, if you could find a lactate and whatever normally comes, and I would take that because normally the, um, I haven't tested out exactly how much you need, but I would just try, try one or two tablets. Um, but the one I would not take, if I were going to take calcium, is calcium carbonate. But get like a lactate or even a citrate and whatever comes in, if it's 250 milligram, 300 milligrams, great for it. Great. That would be perfect. But um, I probably wouldn't go up over 300, but take it right before bed. Um, that's the best time to take calcium because calcium relaxes you. And um, also, um, you probably get the cramps at night. So taking it at bed will actually help you. That's terrific. Okay, on to the next quiz question. All right. So which key mineral helps convert the thyroid hormone from a T4 to a T3? Okay, get on that. And let's see. And by the way, Greg said, awesome. Thank you. And let's go on to someone that's on the phone with us. And that would be uh, Ruby from New York City. Ruby, are you listening? Hi, Dr. Berg. Thank you, Stephen. Hello. How are you? I'm so sorry about my camera. Um, I'm on campus, so I couldn't find the best way to turn it on. So happy. But I'm so happy to be on the show. My mom inspired me to speak with you today because she is a keto follower because of you. And so I wanted to come on today and talk about my thyroid because um, I was recently told that I have Hashimoto's and hyperthyroidism. So um, I wanted to first start with saying that two and a half years ago oh is when I first started to experience symptoms of like having a thyroid disorder. I had hair loss and heartbeats and weight gain, but my endocrinologist didn't like didn't treat me. She said everything was normal. So I went to about two years untreated. So last year in 2021, I was told that I have hyperthyroidism. So I took um, supplements on and off and I was told to stick to a diet, which I didn't stick to um, strictly. And my stress levels and my cortisol was through. 
through the roof. So now in February, I recently took another blood test and my cortisol and all of my thyroid panel was doubled. So my red blood cell was even increased and so was my, my ALT. So now I have a TSH of 0.01, a T4 of 17.5, my cortisol is 26.8 in the morning, and my thyroid peroxidase antibodies is 221. But I thought from my original diagnosis of hypothyroidism, I was feeling better. So in the meantime of these past three, two and a half weeks, I went on keto. I'm on a strict diet of no sugar, no gluten, two quarts of water, one cup of cruciferous vegetables, no carbs, nutritional yeast, and I'm on a bunch of supp new supplements now, but I'm not sure if these supplements are, like I wanted to make sure these are working for me. So my nutritionist told me to take PABA, 500 milligrams, Thyrocom, cortisol manager, and a liver detox. But I just want to make sure that through this strict diet and intermittent fasting and through these supplements that I could kind of sort of bring my thyroid back to normal or stabilize it just because I'm young, I'm 20, and I don't want to go on synthetic medication. So I wanted your opinion. I got it. Um, do, you, do, you, do you presently go through a lot of stress at school and things? Yes. Yes, stress at home, stress at school. Yeah, so that's great that you're taking the supplements. You're taking the right things. The the uh, the the nutritional yeast has the B1, which is great for a hyperthyroid. If you went mm -hmm. from a hypo Hashimoto's to then a hyper, the chances are it's really just a autoimmune issue more than a thyroid issue. Um, so, I, and that can be triggered by stress for sure. So um, I think you're on the right path as far as your eating and your nutrition. I think you're doing a good job. I think we'll the big thing that I would put attention on is doing whatever you can to um, eliminate sources of stress in your life and, and um, counter some of the stress by the, like I said previously, doing physical work outside. Okay. You should get a job uh, where you're doing physical work, manual labor, Okay. I'm, I'm not kidding. I mean, it's like it's such a great therapy, especially if you're a student, sit behind a computer all day. Like you get out there in nature and do something. Um, it's so good for your adrenals. It's good for okay. stress. And um, if you don't have something outside, like start cleaning something inside. But the stress is, um, what that does is it, it's, it, lower, it suppresses the immune system mm -hmm. and allows these autoimmune things to kick in. So okay. I think, yeah, take the nutrition, do these other things, but probably watch my videos on stress um, because that is what I see as like a, what you need help with most, um, mostly. And hopefully you can get through the schooling fast so you can then, because going through school is extremely stressful, as I remember. So, um, you know, you're going to have to cope as well as you can as you get through. And then when you graduate, you can... Um, do other things that hopefully will reduce your stress. Okay. And so, but the new supplements that my nutritionist told me to take, the PABA and the liver detox and the cortisol manager, is that are those all supplements that you think will help over time? I, I think they're fine. I think they're fine. They might help you. Um, I just don't have a, enough data to tell you for sure. But, yeah. you know, you're supporting the adrenal, you're supporting the liver. Uh, PABA mm -hmm. is is also good as a B vitamin, mm -hmm. so all those are are beneficial. But um, okay. I don't I, I couldn't tell you because I, I I don't know those brands. Uh -huh. So Ooh. yeah, because I, I can't really give you an opinion if I don't have that data. But I will say that um, going on that low carb, doing it in the fasting, is very very important. Um, another good thing like lemon balm tea, drinking that mm -hmm. through the day is really good for cortisol to low, help lower cortisol. Okay. Vitamin D is good to lower cortisol. Magnesium okay. is very important for cortisol because um, even a magnesium deficiency um, usually occurs before you get Hashimoto's and even mm -hmm. other types of autoimmune problems. So um, 
consider a good magnesium product as well. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so You're much. Welcome. Thank you, Dr. Thank Berg. you very much. Yeah. Good sure. luck, Ruby. Yeah, she's got the world by the short hairs at 20 years old. Got a nice long life ahead of her. And by the way, you talked about exercise, and, and you use the example of the Jethro's that work around your farm. You know, they eat a moon pie and an RC cola for lunch, but they're chucking bales of hay all day, and they're just super healthy, right? Because they just sort of overcome maybe their nasty diet, which is constant movement. You know, if you just weigh out uh, the different things to improve your health, there's a lot of th factors to look at. You have diet and um, there's other things. And that's like physical activity outside, not on a treadmill, but physical activity outside. I mean, people tend to live longer. If you take a look at the, um, the countries where people live very long, they usually hang outside. They're not inside playing the video games all day. They're not on the treadmill at the gym. They're outside doing physical work, which is such a great therapy. Um, I mean, just try it. Just try it and see if you don't, um, you know, because it affects, it takes your attention off the problems of life when you're, when you're doing other types of work that, um, you know, you don't have time to focus on. So that shift in, that shift in mental focus is a very huge benefit of doing physical work and cleaning something or whatever. That's terrific. All right. Great advice. Uh, and our audience has nailed uh, answers again, I think. Quiz question number four asks, which key min mineral helps convert T4 to T3? And the audience, 45% of them claim uh, that it's selenium, 35% say iodine, and 20% say zinc. Okay. So this relates to the last person I was just talking about, which I was withholding this answer, which is because for Hashimoto's, you want the conversion mineral. And the answer is selenium. Um, one um, Brazilian nut per day will give you a good amount of uh, selenium that you would need like the RDAs. I mean, you'd, you'd get enough by having one nut a day. But selenium is also good in sea, at high in seafood, oysters, other other things, clams, things like that. But selenium is the, the key mineral to help convert the T4 to the T3. Fantastic. Uh, our final contestant, so to speak, in the green room is Mia Franklin. And by the way, thank you folks, because these poor people have to have their faces pressed to the camera for an hour straight, and they're such good sports about it. Mia's coming to us on the phone, so to speak. Mia, are you with us? Yes. Go ahead with your question, Mia. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Berg, having me. And um, I've been watching uh, YouTube, you, YouTube about, you know, gallbladder problems. Mm -hmm. And you recommend um, take a bio, pure bio salt. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to find it on, uh, uh, you know, online, but I couldn't find the, you know, pure bio salt. And uh, I've been, I took your, uh, cold bladder formula for uh, three months straight, and uh, my pain is gone. And uh, I don't know if uh, should I keep taking your cold bladder formula, but I don't have a pain. But I do have uh, bile going into my stomach that causes I have uh, bile gastritis and the uh, uh, nerve better ulcer. So, so what, did you did you say that you have a fibroid? Gastro, uh, bio gastritis. Oh, okay, okay. So, so yes, the uh, gallbladder formula that you're taking, the one that I have, is the purified bile salts. That is the one that's that's the correct one. I'm glad it helped you. Um, so now we're dealing with gastritis, right? So, um, I think that um, the other thing that you're missing is. You're gonna to have to search out a good source, but it's a zinc carnosine is good for uh, inflammation in your stomach, gastritis, and that will be a really good remedy for you. And as far as vegetables go, I probably would stick with different forms of cabbage. Cabbage seems to be really good for gastritis, heartburn, GERD, acid reflux. And you can do it in different forms, like coleslaw without the sugar, uh, even um, cabbage shredded in your salad. 
uh, or even um, uh, sauerkraut. So that's a really, uh, it's a unique vegetable that helps the gut tremendously. So I think you're on the right track. I would also then um, work on the manual. Remember I have the, I don't know if you saw the video on, it's, I think it's called gallbladder flushing, but it's not actually, it's a physical, it's a hands-on massage of your gallbladder and your pancreas. And that should be on my website or if you do a search on it, but I would be doing that through the day as your digestive system um, calms down even more uh, because it's going to, you're going to allow more drainage through that, those ducts. And of course, you know, I'm assuming you're on the healthy version of keto as you're using these supplements, because the the point is that we want to eventually get your basic eating corrected. That's with everyone because you don't want to be dependent on anything the rest of your life. So the key is to eat the right food, have the right, um, combinations of food, the right timing of eating to, um, so your body can heal. Thank you so much. But uh, my doctor suggested me to have a uh, remove a gallbladder. <laughs> oh, but I don't well, want to lose my good gallbladder. Thing you didn't need it. Good thing it was an extra organ that you didn't really need. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, uh, so I do eat a lot of uh, cabbage, and uh, the only time uh, bother me is when I'm sleeping at night. It wakes uh, me up because uh, I think a uh, uh, bile going into stomach. I got it. Okay, so then that uh, then I would add one more thing. Um, during the day, uh, take a tudka. T u d c a. I think. Yes, I saw that video you made, and uh, I do have a, um, autoimmune hepatitis, but this, you said that you don't recommend if I have liver problems. Oh, no, no. You you want to take it, especially if you have a liver problem, because oh. the Tutka the is really amazing uh, uh, what it does to the liver, and it takes the stress off the liver, takes the inflammation off the liver. So, so what will happen is that sludge that's backing up into your stomach, causing gastritis, which is from bile salt more than acid, um, can now drain properly. So um, you take it during the day, empty your stomach, uh, maybe once or twice with two different tablets. And then um, I bet you you would sleep and not have that problem anymore. I would definitely. Okay, uh, I would take a tadka. Yeah, try yeah, that. Yeah, I watched okay. your video many times. Okay, thank you so much. You're Dr. welcome. Borg. Well, that's great. Thanks, Mia, and sure. uh, thanks everybody for participating. Why don't we try? We've got a few seconds left. Uh, for, go to social media, and wrap it up there. Karina from YouTube: Will drinking raw lemon juice break a fast? No, no, no. It's 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 such a small amount of uh, carbs that. I mean, you're talking about maybe breaking a fast for a few minutes. It's not going to be a big deal. I wouldn't worry about it because the benefit of the citrate is very good when you're fasting, uh, especially to reduce kidney stones and and oxalates in the body um, from certain vegetables that you have. Um, One little type thing I want to mention, instead of sauerkraut, you can do kimchi, which also is a cabbage uh, pepper. And that's a really good vegetable. I mean, not a, it's a fermented blend of really good vegetables. And it's, that's good for sinus issues as well. But um, it's kind of spicy. So anyway, I want to just say thanks for everyone for having their attention this long on this video. You made it to the end. I appreciate you. Um, uh, stay tuned for additional videos coming up every single day. And, um, you know, um, also next Friday we'll be back. But um, thanks for your successes. Stay tuned. We'll talk to you real soon. Have a good day.